I have always looked like y'all brighter than me every freaking show. Welcome to Warrior Class. Where the teachers will pass. And you will too if you pass. <laughs> All right, we're down to um, the Your Favorite Social Media Self-Defense. What works, what doesn't episode. Okay. So we will be dealing with those popular uh, self-defense techniques you see all over social media. New member. And uh and Greenside new member. Uh actually Keontae Seeley been around for a while. Uh so okay. um Peace, Keontae. Peace. We're gonna be dealing with your favorite techniques. You know, all those ones you've seen online showing you how to stop the choke, to to stop the gun, your two guns, all that. with your teeth. So, right. So, we're going to get into all of those in just a second. I just want to make a quick thing. We're not doing the news today. We're getting right to it. But I want to say a quick thing about the brother from Dust. You know, the brother, everybody laughing at him. They they, they, uh, try to do his technique. They wake up in heaven and all that. Right. Um. And one day all is gonna wake up in the heavens. <laughs> but um he used to be so I used to struggle with is, is he is, does he really believe in these techniques? Is it a a marketing thing, all of that? Set up. And so I looked into his history as we were doing this thing, this the uh, this episode, I, I researched his history. And uh he started off. He used to be uh, airborne uh, infantry. Okay, uh, he was at Fort Benning. Fort Benning is where airborne school is is at, uh, and where the 85th Airborne is. Okay, so he was at Fort Benning, Georgia, and uh, so he he was you know actually he was he was airborne. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, infantry is that's your basic, we call them bullet stoppers when I was in the army, right? That That's your basic frontline fighter, okay, combatant. But airborne is you jump into a zone and you take that zone, okay? Uh, you jump to a demilitarized zone, you go and take the other zone, or you jump by, I don't know of it. Airborne infantry jumps behind enemy lines. I'm not, I'm not sure of that. I don't think they're that trained to do that. But he was trained, nevertheless. Okay. Is it is, is that like just basic training? It's beyond basic training. So basic training, you're learning how to how to you you use the pugil sticks, you you use the bayonet, which nobody really uses anymore. Right. Um, and you learn some simple self defense techniques. I would imagine when they go to airborne infantry, they learn a little bit more. But they're mainly learning how to use the tool they're using. Now, light infantry knows even more. But so he knows more than the average Joe, but which is enough to trick you. But he doesn't know a whole lot. Hey, hey, Sugar Booker Seven. He doesn't know a lot. Mm. Okay, so that's the one thing. But he, he, you know, they've done stuff. Uh, now, he has done a lot of honorable stuff, like finding people's children who lost. Um, and not for pay. I'm talking about just, you know, helping people out. Uh, he went, you know, helped doing Katrina the rescue. Obviously got a lot of money because they have their own boats and shit from their, wow. their company. Hmm. So, you know, they've done some executive protection work, this and that. I'm saying that to say none of that means he has the skills to teach people how to defend themselves. That's what I was about to say. What, besides that, what right, that? that's why I was like, if you ain't heard nothing, where it's like, <laughs> well, hmm. So that doesn't prepare you, right? A person is a Marine, and they say, I'm going to teach a self-defense class. What qualified you to teach that? Because it's not enough to just be a Marine. We're not going to play that game. A lot of Marines and Army cats, they may be cooks, but they're talking about, you know, they they, they self-defense expert. I had a dude tell me, you know, he was in the Army, and this before I went, that he could snatch my whole torso out of my body. But I know that is impossible. 
He grabs me. I said, you know, you're not going to snatch my torso out, but I'm going to snatch your soul out <laughs> of your body if you don't let me go. And he let me go. Because he was mad because he, he said Ralph Macchio, just to let you know he went to, was one of the greatest martial artists God, in man. the world. God, I said, he's man. not actually a martial artist. You said he was on this? Or his name was? No, not that. That dude didn't say that. Oh, I'm talking about that. this guy who grabbed me. <laughs> and so he said, you know, Ralph Macho is the, one of the greatest martial arts in the world. I said, uh, no. He said, yeah, whoop your ass. <laughs> I said, I would tear Ralph Macho's ass up. No, you didn't, bro. You didn't and beat the rest of, uh, of, 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 of uh, Cobra Kai and Mr. Miyagi's <laughs> ass. Mr. Miyagi was, you know, a thing back then. Oh, so he got pissed. As I'm sure he did. And that's when he decided, you know, he's going to tell me, he's going to pull my whole torso out of my body. All right. Now, if anybody knows somebody who can pull the torso out of the body, we want to have him I, I, want, I want to have him <laughs> as a guest. I'm going to clown him, but then I'm going to go train with him to see if that's actually true. That's from okay. Mortal Kombat. Right? Yes, of course it is. Now, uh, sister, I put up a, a, a post on Insta, uh, Facebook, uh, a guy chopping a bull. And I said, you know, this is ridiculous. Um, I was talking about how people think they can beat different animals. Like people, some people think they can beat a yeah, gorilla and all that, right? It's there. ridiculous, yeah. right? This sister was like, well, I don't know what kind of martial artist you are. My daddy has beaten many dogs. I said, well, like chihuahuas. <laughs> said, no, uh, German shepherds. Uh, even a, a, a sooner, which is a half wolf. I said, Okay, all right, you know, kudos to your dad. I want to insult her daddy. She loved her daddy. But I'm like, her daddy lied to her. It was dogs that he owned, so they were scared. <laughs> right, of right, right. Just right. That's exactly. What he he I, I, I'll whoop Kai's ass, my <laughs> German Shepherd. But I won't. But, <laughs> right, exactly. So, and I ain't going to go to no German Shepherd off the street and whoop his ass either. Come on, stop, y'all. All right, so, uh, but th this this era has made people like that that's what i was gonna say man we we do too much down we do too much talking man we do a lot of talking sometimes i even be i, I hope people don't get us twisted on the show you know what i'm saying peace skeptical manners oh yeah so uh, uh, real quick uh, skeptical, yeah. skeptical manners had a question was that him he said uh thoughts on on 52 blocks okay so it's funny another friend of mine uh carlos commerce asked me about 52 blocks. Now, he's a Sambo expert. Oh, oh he's great. Oh, my God. Uh, but Carlos Cummings, excuse me. Uh, I'm thinking Carlos Chalmers is my cousin. <laughs> uh, Carlos Cummings. He is incredible, okay? He just didn't know what 52 was. Right. A lot of people still don't and know. A lot of people, right. The, the so 52 blocks uh, is a defensive system. Um the main person uh, that's known, you know, that's out here teaching uh, is, is Light Burley. He teaches, it's called A-D-O-S, I believe, or A-O-D-S, Art of, A-O-S-D. Oh, goodness. Art of Self-Defense. I'm like, who? Because I'm thinking of A-D-O-S, you know. I, I, not, not a, <laughs> the A-D-O-S is, is, is the, you know, uh, African descendants of slaves. slaves or American descendants of slaves. And, right. They ain't no, cleaner than African, African at all. Or well, we we say soda here on Black Power. <laughs> that ADOS is soda. All right, I, I'm not insulting the soda folks, but uh, he's the art of self defense. AOSD, right? It is, didn't that derive from like Jailhouse Rock? It's like a piece of a portion. Well, of Jailhouse Rock, yeah, that's more how they do it on the West Coast, and uh, so Jailhouse Rock they do it on the West. Okay. They were doing uh, on the East Coast. They were doing uh, fifty two uh, Stato here in Georgia. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, it's called no Stato. They were they were doing up up in New York. Here it's called Alto. Right. Right. So it's all the same. Um, now some people argue does it have it doesn't have African root. I think like Bertie like no, nah, it's come from boxers, right? And it does it definitely has a boxing root, but I know it has an African root because I met at least Stato. I'm not Stato, Alto does. I was on the bus stop with one of my students, and he's like, uh, can you show me that knife technique? So I'm, I'm showing different knife things, and we started sparring with the knife. 
And this guy, he's out there selling CDs. He comes over and said, can I, can I uh, uh, use one of your knives, uh, you know, play with it a little bit? I said, yeah. He starts going with the knife. I said, come on. So I'm, he's knocking. I'm, I'm knocking his out the way. We're going at it. I said, what do you do? Now, now he says to me, you been in, in the joint? I said, I have, but I didn't learn this in, in, in the joint. He said, uh, well, where, where, where you get this from, man? Because I got, I got mine in the joint. I said, I got mine from Africa. <laughs> and he said, man, I've been thinking this was some of the criminals my whole life. Started crying. We just hugging on the oh, goddamn yeah, bus stop. Yeah, yeah. Because he realized he had found a connection in the joint to his ancestors. Right. So you can argue whether it's African or not. If you don't do African martial arts, you really don't know. You can't make that judgment. I can. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you. So 52 definitely has an African root. The way he was doing it with the knife and everything. Right. right? right. Um, Different variations. Now, a lot of what you see now is, is, is a lot of boxing, but it has a lot of rhythm to it. And they use, the heavy with using elbows, unlike boxing. Okay. Uh, a, a lot of 52 practitioners I know, they also do like Asian martial arts and mix it. Um, but this brother, what I saw, it, it was no need to mix with anything. Mm. Um, and his pure auto, you know, they'll say, like, uh, my, my friend slash author, uh, Milton Davis, he always says auto rap. But Milton, if you're watching, they don't just say auto rap, they say auto, and you see them moving, you know, in line and things like that. Now, the other one, Jailhouse Rock, which uh, a lot of them call 52 now, on the West Coast, they use a lot more spins, things like that, headbutts, more See stuff like that. So that's, it, it's, it's, it's strongly African rooted, it's very rhythmic, uh, highly defensive. So you know, that's 52 blocks, okay. Um, I did a workshop with a comrade, uh, Wise Morrow, who's a master of 52 blocks. He's here in Atlanta. And Wise Burley is here in Atlanta, uh, too. I think they're doing things together now. But uh, if you're in Atlanta uh, and Wise goes up to New York, he's originally from New York. Uh, and like Burley, they both <laughs> um, get with one of them or both of them. Okay. It's like it's still evolving, too. Because you constantly see them adding, look like they add on stuff. Well, because yes, it's evolving because there's a lot of so a lot of the teachers who were teaching it, they had different philosophies. Mm-hmm. So you know, like getting you those and, and you taking what you can use. Consolidated. Right, exactly. So I mean, same way as anything. Like when, when, when you're doing karate, there's not just one karate. Right. There's Shotokan, there's Kyoku, uh was it Kyoku something? Uh, that there, there's different arts. That there, there's a uh, Goju Ru, Shinto Ru, you know, all kinds of things. I think Shito Ru, I think that's made by the Mormons. They made their own karate style. Okay. Oh, yeah, like the five cents, they take the best part and make it your own. Yes, exactly. Except for African martial arts and it feels going, isn't it? All of us, the best part. Well, even <laughs> so, the way our history. In Egbe Ogun, there's no martial art. You go to Africa, there's no martial art called Egbe Ogun. There's an Egbe Ogun. That's a society. We call it that, but it's comprised of Lamba, Gidibo, uh, Kili Jawaro, which are three African systems. And the way uh, my father looked at it, and me too, uh, I just know at my age now, I had a time. If you went to South Africa and you learned the Zulu martial arts. Bring them back. Now let's look at what we can use and make valuable for us. We brought in uh, uh, another comrade, Ambulancia, who does uh, Pentas a lot. And he taught us to use the uh, Karambit. 
All of us got Karamas now. It's our favorite. It's one of our favorites. So now that's the Indonesian is not African, but there's a whole nother thing with that. So I, I have a project called the One Root Project that shows connections between the the different arts of, of the, the club uh, originated of the site and, and 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 it originated in the but it, it didn't have a, the the ring on it it originated in africa though uh as did the cloth that they use uh so I, I i have the one ring project that deals with the history of uh african martial arts and the the cross-pollination between other cultures with right. African martial arts. And we'll 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 do an episode on that where I, I just gotta get the other guests down. I'm I'm gonna be doing a uh Warrior Con, which is a convention where we're bringing in the different indigenous martial artists that are not the typical arts that you know of. So not the ones from Japan, Korea, or China. So Southeast Asia, Hawaii, uh different countries in Africa, uh, 52 blocks. We're going to be bringing in different people. Uh, we were going to do that 2020, but right, COVID hit COVID us. messed it all up. All right. <laughs> so we're about to get to it. Um, say somebody, what's a good hand-to-hand -hand combat martial art? Um, any of them that use tools? No, any that. any martial art that use tools, tools heavy. That's a good hand to hand martial art because when you put the tool down, you can still use the principles uh, and some te many techniques that are also uh, used with the tool. Okay, and they're going to be combative because you're working against another person with a tool. Right, they're not using the tool. You may want to reconsider that martial arts. You don't know what to do with a knife and nothing like that. Now, I manifesto, he grabbed dude wrist and snapped it. I'm talking about ghosts or power or something. Someone asked me a question about what the, what the, what ghost was using in power when he grabbed, oh, oh here it is. James Thompson asked, what's the technique ghost did in power where he snapped that, that goon's wrist? Okay, that's I, called, I don't I don't remember him doing that's called any that's called a movie martial art. Yeah, that's just a movie. I don't never remember Ghost yeah, doing martial arts. No, he fought he fought somebody, but that wasn't him, you know. Ghost. <laughs> I remember him shooting the cat in the first episode. Drake. No, nah, but yeah, that was <laughs> not Drake. Throw down. Don't mess with Drake. <laughs> Don't mess with Drake. Drake. Drake's a war winner to death. <laughs> <laughs> and then after he after beat your ass, he be singing. <laughs> All right, we're about to get to it. Um, so we're gonna work on unarmed techniques first. Asked about the hand to hand techniques. Uh, so we're gonna move this around, and we're gonna get to it. And you know, I just realized we're live, so we can use two two uh, cameras now. All right, so I don't have to edit. We just mute one. Man, we hate. Well, do you want to do that now, or I guess we we'll just go ahead. No, we good now. <laughs> Next time, we got y'all. And and I'm the the tea of the day, ginger tea. I'm gonna start doing that, so y'all know the ginger tea. Yeah. Always good to get some ginger in your system for your breathing when you're about to work some technique. And yes, I drink tea even when it's 110 degrees outside. Yes, he does. I do not drink cold anything. I drink wine when it's 110 degrees outside. Damn. <laughs> uh, I don't really drink cold anything. Uh, I prefer room temperature to blazing hot. If it's coffee or tea, I want that job where it's hot enough to, to, to rend the flesh off the bone. Hot food, hot uh, tea. I don't love know it how hot. you do all that stuff. Too. Love it hot. If it's tepid, you bring me some warm tea. Oh my god, I'm just grossed out. I can't eat it. I mean, drink it. All right. I don't know why I'm like that. <clears throat> so the first technique, uh, 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 a well-known martial artist did, did this technique. I'm, I'm gonna do it to, to belay. 
Uh, I always say I'm apologize beforehand. They know it's gonna be a <laughs> you know a little hands on. It's the slap to the neck. Oh, now the slap <laughs> to the neck is supposed to is, is supposed to cut off your carotid artery. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and knock you out. Okay, so I'm gonna slap him in the side of his neck. If he if he pass out, just get ready to catch him. I got you. I can take you to that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm sorry. Do you feel uh, dizzy or anything? Can I just say, it will make you close your eyes, won't it? Yeah, yeah, of course it will. It'll yeah. make you close your eyes for a split second, but other than that, it's going to make you mad. It's going to make me pull so, my knife out. you're still conscious? You know, you still know who you are and everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, okay, the science of that, you have two carotid arteries. So even if it did cut the carotid artery off, you still have blood to the brain, you're not going to pass out. That is false, okay? Now, if I did want to, so if I, if I did want to, to knock him unconscious from here, okay? The best thing to do, one is, 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 is you gotta knock him unconscious after the technique. The best technique from here, now if I was in the back, I would rear naked choke him. But from here, uh, you got hand pads. I do. I already know what's you about, know what's about that. Oh man, I can't stand this. <laughs> so I'll show you the best thing to do instead of slapping to the neck. Slapping to the neck. Now I've had strokes. That's not. Gonna, that's not gonna do nothing. It's not gonna even even be something. But to the ear, to uh, the ears. Let me just tell y'all. This hurt me even with these pads right here. This still is. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm only going to do, you know, four, five now. <laughs> so you can hit to the ear once, and that, that'll drop my balance. You have to work again. You want to knock him out, you go two. So you hit, hit both ears. You all right? Yeah, okay. That's uncomfortable. And That's I'm a G. And I'm a G. That's a, without these pads, I'll be, I'll be sleeping right now. <laughs> now. Ominika said that she's brave enough to let me do it without the pants. Let's see that. So y'all can see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't it's not gonna knock him out. It's gonna take his equilibrium, okay? Definitely gonna do He's going to fall because the equilibrium is off. And I've done this. Out there. Trust y'all. He's gonna fall. The knockout part comes once he falls. <laughs> you stomp the hell out of him and you knock him out. That's how you knock out from, <laughs> from them. You're not hitting to his carotid artery and knocking them out. All right? You're do damage. You have to be so far back, you give a person a chance to defend himself before you even strike with a, a slap. If you hit with the bone here, that draws you. It, it, it balances you, yeah. but it does not knock you out. You have to follow with something else. Even it would be hard to do it this way with hitting both because unless you just cause... Uh, swelling on both sides, right? That's not you're not going to stop the blood flow to his brain like that. So that's false. If you've seen that, and and this was taught to sisters, sisters do. Uh, mm -hmm. The woman that taught that, uh, you know, I normally don't call people a liar. She's a liar. Okay. All right. <laughs> I just want to tell you, if you got kids, what you do is just do your hands like this right here. And get your kids, they're like nine to ten years old, and just tell them to slap you like that. But keep your hands right here so you can just feel. Just make sure they don't slap you right there. Yeah, just make sure they don't slap you in your face. But just feel the, the power of that. That's, it's very, very powerful. Or you got a spouse with you. You better have some pads, though. You, you got to have some pads if you got an adult or somebody over they, 13. They, they crack, well, it can't be like Jamie 13. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. if you got big children, don't let so, them know. Yeah, so but you can feel that. Test these, man. Prove the wrong or right. Put these Tell hands right there, and that's gonna be bad without the pads. Just let you listen, know. man. If you got pads, it's still gonna be uncomfortable. Okay. You would, I don't like that. I never like doing that. That's <laughs> uh, real choke. And if, if you all have things you've seen, let me know. Real choke with S grip. Put hands on back of. Oh, okay. This now. This was y'all probably seen the video. This big brother with this. Little white lady, okay, and I'm gonna have them do. I'm, I'm gonna see if you can get out of it in just a minute. He grabs her around her neck and like this, 
first of all, nobody does choke like this here. Okay, just so you know. But he grabbed her like that. And he was so big. I mean, he probably could have choked her because he was just so big. And oh, she told his, but but he had it like this underneath, like he should. But he had his wrist. It was weird the way he had his wrist. But I mean, you can still see his wrist, maybe because it's arms so big. I don't know. But his elbows under her chin. And uh I'll show you how she got out real quick. Grab me around right there. So it's this right here. Yeah, and you got an S lock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and she was like, Oh god, I can't, I can't breathe. You got me. Well, I can't. So he said, put both hands. This is a big old brother, big, gigantic, about 300 pounds of muscle. Almost my size. Almost, yeah. Half your size. <laughs> so he said, put both hands on the back of the neck and you use your hands to press in the secret pressure point right here. Okay. Because I manipulate many pressure points and I wouldn't advise you to mess with pressure points to save your life. And uh, I've never seen that one, but I'm going to do this. He, and they pour down, she pulled into it like that. And I tapped him to let me go because that didn't work. <laughs> but when, when she, she, he pulled down, her, her chin, chin hit it. He said, ow, ow. This dude went from me. Yeah, yeah. Ow, 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 ow. I said, this dude acting a fool. He's acting a fool to sell the program or whatever because that does not work. Uh, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man. Maybe it's because I was too tall or something. Put that on her. You should probably put it on me and see if it's back. And now put your hand behind your back and press it to that pressure point. You're right there at it, too. Press it to it. Well, I feel a little tingle. It's a little. Yeah, it's not going. <laughs> it's not, I want to pass out. So that doesn't work. Okay, that doesn't work. Now, he's going to put the proper way to, to, to do that rear choke, by the way, is when you, you clap your hands and squeeze. It would even be better if you grab your wrist, but to S lock like that, it's not enough. You got too much space in there, but you can grab me around real quick and uh, give me the proper. So I'm in the proper, not a real naked choke. Oh, what was this? Just no. A, just a, oh, just a, re a regular lock like this, the same lock. Yeah, you know, you know, we call it, I want to call it yeah. here. So I'm, now I'm choking. Move forward a little bit so you can see. So what you want to do. Is make your hands in the shape of a C, put them in this space. You say, Well, he got his arm. Uh, you can move your head so you can get your fingers in there. Okay. Now you want to bring your elbows back like you're doing an elbow strike. I'm breathing now. I'm good. He's not on my carotid arteries. I'm good. But you don't want to just stop there. Okay. So after you have that there, you want to turn towards the arm. So the arm is on my left side, okay, where his bicep is. It's on both sides, but it's on his bicep. I want to turn towards that, come around this way. If I, I've been thinking, see I have him here? Yeah. See, he's already off balance. balance. So I'm here. I turn. Can you bring that down so you can see where my feet are? My feet, no, it's not showing it. My feet are almost behind him. I get my feet behind his heel. Now you can bring it back. And now this is floor, so I'm not going to throw him like I normally would. Make sure you're on balance. Turn your hip away from him. I'm going to the down. Road. He's going to go down. Okay. We've shown that before. We have shown that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. but I'm just saying that's the, that's the actual solution to that job that that uh, was being taught that that brother was doing. Okay. Right. So once again, and if he has me like this, the ball in the net. right? The police old strangle. Mm -hmm. You turn your chin towards this. Now you now you're not because he's not crushing your windpipe now. And then you do the same thing here. Step, turn, take him down. I'm just not gonna throw him down because of the floor. I don't want him. And, and I, I don't really care throwing him on the floor. I don't want to throw him into his computer. 
<laughs> and mess my computer up. All right. <laughs> so he can take the floor, but my computer can't take the floor. Okay. Um, somebody, that's what a broken finger will do to a big man. Uh, this is great. How the hell she get out of this? Okay, right. So now that's easy for me. We'll let Omi Nigga do it. You're gonna grab her there. So Omi Nigga, you just reach. Put your fingers in there. See how she got room to move? Get her fingers in. Before you do that, before you do that, I want them to see that it's, it's the hole is really on. I'm not doing it's no really like. really tight. Right, she I'm can't wait no too long. She's choking. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Put your fingers in and throw your elbows back. Right, now she can breathe. See, she's down on the carotid artery. I can't now put your, your foot to the side of them. Put, put, make sure your heel is down. Right, and now just look, look towards that way. And now turn your hip that way. No, the other way. Look that way, but turn your hip this way. Yeah, and he goes down. He'll go down. He'll go down. Okay, and you can see she's out of it anyway, even though she didn't throw him down. Okay, so that's how she gets out of that. This thing here, that there's no magic pressure point that's gonna make him and let go. If you try it at home, that make you buy the system from them because obviously you must be doing it wrong. Right, right, right. right. It didn't right. work yet. Yeah, let me buy this. Yeah, let me right. spend all my money on this system. Because yeah, that's what they were doing. They were selling a system to folks. Okay. Um, Anything fine motor like that, that you got now, to find a pressure point to, that's going to be bad to do. Now this it's one stress and duress. Exactly. Rear bear hug, arms pin. This is from our boy at Dust. The brother who is out there who we talked about earlier, uh, who yeah. everybody's making fun of, this and that. You need to just say children stop doing technique. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, be be a rescuer of children, yeah. help you doing 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 uh disasters. Yeah. But don't don't do the self-defense techniques no more. Because now now he's become a joke. And he wasn't doing his joke and He's not joking when he's doing this either. He's not a jokey joke person. He yeah, really believes this works. So now, could it could it work for him? He weighs probably about two hundred thirty pounds muscle or something like that. He may be able to pull off some things to somebody untrained. Right to the untrained somebody like trained real light light lightweight. Right, you know, uh, he could do that maybe. To Omi Nikki, maybe. Okay. But she said nope. <laughs> but most of the stuff doesn't work. So this is what he teaches. If somebody grabs you around like this, um, it, it really don't matter because <laughs> his mastery, and, and this is ridiculous. I'm gonna show you two things that he does. I, I mean, this is so the first one. Now, this one you may say, well, that works. First is you get behind him, your foot. Now, number one, that ain't happening if he's resisting. Right, I'm, I'm not getting my foot behind. But look, let's just say <laughs> I managed to get my foot behind. That means you had a really weak grip. Yeah. Okay, you can bring it back up. He said you get the foot behind, you raise your arm, and you just stand up straight. <laughs> And he's supposed to wait, 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 let go, let go. He's supposed to fall. So he's supposed to fall when I stand up. Oh, I'm a, like oh, that. That's a lot. Yeah, well. <laughs> so it breaks down when I'm trying to get my foot behind him in the first place. So right. first of all, grab me tight. Now just give some light resistance. Just don't let me put my foot behind you. Oh, well, let me try the other side. I'm about to fall. <laughs> I can't get my foot behind him and, and he's behind me. <laughs> but let's say, okay, you to the side of me. Go to the side of me and make it easy. So I don't know who would grab me like that. Yeah, well, that's a crazy grab. And, and I try like this. But he grabs me and don't want my foot. He's resistant. Right. And he sees me bringing my foot back. I can't get my foot. <laughs> so once again, it don't work from the side either. But let's come around here. Now, I do get my foot behind. So come up a little bit. Mm -hmm. My foot is behind him and deep. I'm so deep. Uh, my knee's back here. And now I'll bring it up. All I got to do is stand up, open my arm. <laughs> ah, he still grabbed me and he did not fall. 
look like you're in a bad position when you get behind. I you. am. You're just going to dump me. Yeah, that's what it felt like I was going to dump. So that is not what you do if your arms are pinned. But we'll give you a little something. So he grabs around my, okay. Oh my God, my arms are pent. So the first thing you do is step wide to base yourself. Step wide so you got a good base, okay? Bring your hands up. Bring your hands up. Now, I don't know if you can see across what I have on. There's space right there. Oh, dang, I didn't even see that. <laughs> There's space there. I'm behind his elbow now. I'm not trying to give him space. I'm trying to stay tight. And then I grab my own wrist in there. Now I'm in bad shape. And now he's in bad shape. Yep, 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 yep. Da, 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 da. Okay, right. now I do that again. And I keep it simple for, for your support. That's too much for me. It's really not. Right, I'm going to keep it real simple. Step in base, arm up. That's the first part. Now one hand comes, you keep this arm up. One hand comes out. And you bring that behind his elbow. Now at this point, if if he may let go trying to punch you and you, you take him. But even if he doesn't, you just bring that one out now. <laughs> now you press on his wrist on the side you got trapped there. You don't want him to go nowhere. I forget you how grab here. Is. I got to let go. I'm letting I'm just slowly he, letting he's go. Let go. <laughs> so at that point, I just now just step out. If I want to turn around and and and, and, and uh, dislocate his shoulder, I just step out. I'm out. I'm free. Okay. Keep his arm up. That gives me the space I need. You see, man, I don't have enough space because he's so strong. Me and that one up there. He ain't me. Now both are out. Say, I he said I'm not strong again. That's true. Not as you. I'm talking about the one you said. No, it's cool. That's true. He, <laughs> he, he threw a jab. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And then you step out and for, for those that do want to do it, and because he said that, <laughs> now he's saying tap. This isn't the full lock. The full lock is I put my thigh to his thigh. Tap, tap, tap. See now that <laughs> full lock. Okay, but you can just get out, take off. Okay. Can't do nothing about that. Peace to the Warriors. Peace. Uh, Spider-Man 7285. Tyrese Sampson, rest in peace. All right, Derek Askew. Um, let's see here. Why do they try to sell women on bullshit? That makes me so mad. Because they don't know shit. They want your shit. <laughs> So they sell you on bullshit. They sell men on it too. It's, it's men filling in these karate. I mean, excuse me, I don't want to call nobody out, but they all. But but they, but, but they, they do it more than women. Yeah, they do. Uh, I was asked to come to Curves to teach. They had four hundred women there. I had uh, my student Kunle with me. I was like, oh boy, this is great. We're gonna, you know, make us a killing while doing some good stuff for folk, right? Four hundred women. I said, we're gonna start off. Right off, getting on the ground. Everybody walked out, and we were left with four women. The guy called me in the room. He said, well, let me, let me talk to you guys. He opens up his wallet. He said, you see this? See this? See, I'm 30 feet right now. <laughs> so Kuma is about to say something. I'm a third degree black belt. Mm. And see, what you need to know is the first thing you do is teach against Wrist grab. This is what the women need to know. <laughs> I said, your mom ever been grabbed by her wrist? <laughs> your wife? Your sister? You ever been grabbed by your wrist? Other than by the police, and they don't do this grab like this. Yeah. Have, have, have they? He said, well, 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 no. I said, well, shut up. <laughs> Just like that. Shut up. I said, you are not qualified to tell me how to deal with self-defense because I've done it on the street. I've done it in combat. I've been training much long before you thought about taking martial arts. I was training. So don't, don't insult me by showing me a card. That card means nothing. Right? And you know it don't mean nothing because I said that and told him to shut up. You <laughs> shut up. 
because he recognized somebody was in his presence who knew what they were talking about and he was about to get talked. At least he had that kind of sense. So don't do that. And ask, could he come to my class after I told him no? Half, most of those no. women probably left. Well, not most of them, but I would say a lot of them probably left because their idea of what they were talking exactly. about. Exactly. So the idea. They, 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 they've been taught the, the risk. You think he hasn't been teaching them? Of course he has. Right. So, and probably was upset that I was asked to come in by Curves Corporate to teach mm -hmm. and not him. Right. Who've been teaching that bull job probably the longest. So they'll teach you that. And ask yourself, have you ever been grabbed, particularly the sisters, on your wrist? Besides somebody trying to get you on the dance floor. Right. Come on, <laughs> baby. And still, usually, different, usually this way. Right. The same way the police grab you when they're about to like you. And see, she's about to mm -hmm. just uh, go ahead and go, go ahead. You go ahead. She's about to catch me in that. And, and so now... My wrist is dislocated because I was trying to grab somebody. Like, come on, girl. Right? The police do that, too. So they can mm. handcuff and then put your arm behind your back, and then they tell you to put the other one because that hurts so bad. Right. It's pain and compliance. That's what it's called, pain and compliance technique, right? Mm. So nobody just grabs you. Like, the only people that grab like that is in this situation, uh, Bile. I gotta practice with you. Is this is weapon retention actually? Right. That's what it really is. It's not somebody just grabbing your wrist. Right. He grabs my wrist. No, no, grab so for your own safety. Grab this. Right. He grabs my wrist. I just step forward, lift. I'm out. He gets cut up now. Okay. Or. I don't know. I like using the real knife. No, <laughs> he grabs my wrist. Inside, outside. Inside, outside. Jesus is way out there. <laughs> so he grabs it. Now I'm out. He gets cut. What about if I do like that, though, Bob? Oh, Boy, my God. God. <laughs> now, some people say this. When I grab them. On this, some people say, use both hands. And for, we don't occupy both hands on one tool in, in the African traditions. Never. That's why you don't see us using two-handed swords. We use one-handed sword or sword and a shield or two swords. Hey, let them know. Let me know. I'm squeezing your wrist too tight on this. Oh man, it's, it's tight. My 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 arm gonna <laughs> just, just <laughs> pop right off so tight. So from here, you make the decision which one you want to do. You gotta do this one. Yeah. Cut him. Cut him. Or if you like that one that I did, you just do that one. You cut him. I'm not. I'm yeah, not straining, sure. and oh, oh but but here, here, I mean, you do it because she's smaller than me. Just just in case you. I got her, B. I got her. Grab a one first. Let me and try to hold. Let me try. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Pull, I like to pull my sleeve up. So right. what she's doing, just so you know, is she's going to turn and look at her hand. She's turning under his arm. Now she's gonna, it looks cute, so she's gonna turn it so he can see it, so he can also enjoy it. And now she's out. Not just I'm pushing, like that push his elbow. Right. You don't have to push his wrist, push his elbow. Huh. The reason why you wanna push his elbow is so he's, he begins to turn away from you, and now you right. Bad, bad. Okay? It's not a good spot to stay. So the other one, yeah. I'm just stepping forward. I bring my wrist up like I'm wiping the side of my hair. Dougie. Right. Do the duck. Well, don't do the duck with a knife. You go around <laughs> and then you'll, you'll shave yourself. But you come up. Can't hold that. It'll, the ear. I'm going up slow. Try this at home, man, because I know y'all don't think. you might. Some of y'all might really. Step towards the person. And you can, you can do it without a knife in your hand. Right. Just step towards the person. Bring that up. Get your butter knife. Pushing against their joint. Or just get get a butter knife. Yeah, you're pushing against the thumb joint. I can't. It's, I can't hold on. I'm trapped. Gotta let go. And then shave his face. Okay. So that's how you get out of that. But now, one one thing on the wrist, they show they taught women. A person has a a point with a knife like this. Uh -oh. You chop it. Oh, oh, like this. You chop it. You chop my wrist. He's gonna. He's gonna drop it. 
This is what, what they teach. Okay, now, Jeez. number one, never train for the chump. Right. Train for the expert because if you get to beat the expert or defend yourself against the expert, you can definitely handle the chump. They must train people off right as they uh, he's gonna so he's gonna chop in the end, they're chopping the outer wrist. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make a clear indication of, of, of what's in that. So, so I got my knife and you just do hi -ya! Ah! Yeah, do it again, like that. Yeah, like that. I chopped him, y'all. <laughs> now he did chop me the inside chop. I don't want to break his wrist. <laughs> hard, you know what I'm saying? Now, here, here, oh, my nigga. Now, she got a little tiny bone. I apologize wrist. for this already. Go ahead and, and, and make sure you're holding the knife properly now because we don't want him to make it fly out your hand. And and, and so, proper, you hold it across here. These lines, let me see here. These lines here, you hold it across those lines and then you wrap it around. Don't put it in the middle of your palm. But even if she did, he's not going to knock that out with a chop. Hit it with that karate chop. You just hit me with ah! And that's hitting hard, too. Woo! I did the Bruce Lee that time. See that? Didn't come up. She still has it. Now, if you wanted to try to chop this out, number one, hit the inside. This is where the nerves and the tendons are. So I'm only going to take one chop there because, you know, that, that hurts bad there. And that's the red But You can go ahead. <clears throat> Well, another you say you want another? <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I can do another. You can I, I'm not doing it light, even though you're making jokes now. Mm, mm, mm. I still <laughs> got this. He still is going to get cut up. That is not how you deal with a knife. <laughs> right. So, the way he's got a knife up on me, I'm getting cut. <laughs> because, one, I shouldn't let him get up on me like that. That's the number one. And nobody does it, just so you know. If I wanted to hit him with a knife, I'm walking by, hey, how you doing, sir? Boom, and then I hit him. Right, nobody be like, hey, brother. That's but if you get that fool that want to hide, <laughs> do, 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 do. And, and they like this, right, right. and you watch it too much, <laughs> and I got my knife. Well, and you don't have a knife, you've screwed up, or he's just too close and you can't get yours out, it's, it's fine. If he's like holding that to my, my neck, oh my God, that is frightening. Oh my gosh. Okay. So just get that jab away from your neck. Step over to the side, though. I'm being nice and light. Don't be nice and light with a knife. But I'm, I'm not afraid of knives. Even with the real knife. Step. Right. Now, if you step the wrong way, you slip in your throat. <laughs> That's the opposite. Way. So people say there's no wrong in technique. Man, yeah, yeah, it is. When the tool is, becomes involved, it makes you have to work. You go towards the handle. The handle is right here. Okay. Besides, if so, just so you can see. You say, isn't it always towards this baby finger side? No. I got this to his throat like that. It's a different move. That's right? different. You don't go to the baby finger side, you go to this, this side. side, but as you go. You move, right. You see how he's moving his hip? Because if he just knocks it out the way, it slides across his throat. He gets cut anyway. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're moving your hip as you knock it out the way. And then from there, I would say haul ass. You're in deep trouble if he pulls out a knife and you let him get close enough to put it to your throat. Now, we, we train with dealing with this, but self-defense is you learn it quick to be able to deal with you. you you're not going to learn quick how to deal with this knife like that. The other way, so what, what we're, we're saying is just turn your hip towards the opposite end. So don't turn towards the blade end, turn towards the other way and, and knock it out the way. After that, haul ass or whatever it is you can do. You, you knock it out the way, pull your knife if, you, if, if you've been training to deploy your tool, stab him. Or pull your pistol. Pop him. Pop him. But he can still cut you coming back now or in his depth throws, just so you know. This is uh, the most dangerous tool on the street. It is not the gun. It is the knife. It's extremely dangerous. The, the pistol 
If I'm pointing it at him, the muzzle, that's where the, the bullet comes out. That's, that's, that's the business end. That's the danger. That's not pointing at him. Really don't have much danger as I crack him in the head with the, right. with the grip. This thing, I if I move it, mess up, and, and, and I touch that, I'm cut. If we're struggling for it and it just slips on me a little bit, I'm cut. It ain't like you're just going to keep moving through the cut. For a minute, you're going to feel you, it. Ah, and that's ah. all it takes. Unless you've really been training a long time. Okay. You can cut Bob a finger off. He's going to still keep rocking, but most people don't uh, do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep rocking and then be crying after. <laughs> That's why I gotta I gotta do something quick because I can go ahead and cry. Okay, <laughs> so that to your neck, bad scenario. But turn away from the blade, your hip, and knock it. Okay, and then take off or whatever you're gonna do, or, or grab him. If you don't want to use it again, grab tight. Grab right for your life and dump him because <laughs> your life is. Is in jeopardy now. This one, this is the most ridiculous, and and, and I'll show you why. I'm, I'm gonna pull the real knife, don't move when I come around. But I want them to be able to see you have a real knife, the blade end is not pointing at his neck, so this is the stupidest move ever. To, to point the blade, I gotta go like this, my wrist is all bent or. Or hold it like this in the wrong way. Hmm. So it's not even made for that. If I grab him like that and I got a knife to his throat, I'm just trying to be threatening, but I really don't have the ability to slit his throat right there. I can stab him up. I can do damage, but your throat's not in danger, just so you know. I, should, I wish I knew this when I was 13. A, a dope man grabbed me like that one time. And it, <laughs> hey, yeah, I was crying and everything. It wasn't even yeah, because there. you're dealing with the fact a knife in my throat. And I saw in the movie, do guys throw slit. The back, of, the back of the knife <laughs> is at your throat. Now, what you should do is grab him, but flip it. So, so the blade <laughs> at his throat. Now, if a knife is, or if it's double edged, so now it does have a, a, a blade on it, okay? How do you get out? Now, I'm going to show you what this was taught. These are some uh, Chinese folk. Uh, I'm only saying Chinese folk because we think all Chinese folk know martial arts. No, they do not. Saying all Chinese folks know martial arts is racist is like saying all black folks know, know how to play basketball. And I can prove you that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I can shoot, but I can't dribble to save my life. People are amazed at that. Your football is good in basketball. So grab me, grab me, grab me, grab me. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, now, now you get around my waist, I can't go nowhere. Oh, okay. oh, 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 God. So she was like this. She, oh. And so they said, you grab, um, let, let me not no, talk how they were talking. Let me not talk. This is how they were talking. <laughs> but let me not do it because that does seem bad. I'm just really impersonating them. I do that impersonate people. But let me yeah. stop because it sounds like I'm making fun of Asians. The way no, they talk. Impersonate everybody. And I impersonate it, but I'm not going to, okay. <laughs> Letting you know, I wasn't being, I wasn't being racist right there. You have to identify as Asian. <laughs> to, to talk that way. <laughs> Yeah, well, I identify, I identify as all people, so I can talk. Hey, buddy. Human. I can talk like everybody. <laughs> hey, pal. Now, who, who is that? Now, a lot of people say that's white folks. I don't know not one white person well, that sounds like that. Like you do? Yes. Yeah, I know some Negroes that talk like that. They kind of sound white. Right, right. Hey, buddy. All right, so you grab, and then, then you got to work your hand, fingers around. <laughs> is that around. what you said? Yes. She's working her fingers around. And then now you that. grab, you grab, well, you grab the, the blade itself. And then you, you, uh, bow. And I'm not being, I'm serious. Cause they, uh, now, they said, now you, you're saying the Asian bow. No, 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 no. <laughs> so you bow. Wow. And now your fingers out. And then you, you, you take it. And, hoy, hoy, and you pull it out. And now you got the knife. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely serious. That is foolishness. So once again, you got me here. If I turn any type of way, any if you make any mistake, I don't even gotta move. Now, if he wants to really put that blade to my, my neck, turn your wrist so you, not without flipping it. See, he's already put himself in a wrist lock. That's uh, easy. Yeah. That that's not gonna happen. No. That's not gonna happen. They were they reverse grip. So reverse. yeah, you reverse grip, you're gonna actually get but there's no reason to do that. Right. If I wanted to take out a century. 
or something like that. I put it here. I twist. I put it in your brain stem. I bet you show that too. No, no, don't say I showed that. No, no. You dreamed that. You dreamed. <laughs> you, dreamed you dreamed. I showed that. I, 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 I'm for peace. All right. So now I would never teach how to take out a century. Only how to defend yourself. Okay. So I don't know what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> come, come forward. If this happens. Now this is bad because he got this hand there. But it really, that's not the problem. That, that's the problem. And I'm gonna show you one. There's another. Another one said you hit the hand. The hand opens. You grab the fingers. You lock them. Jeez. And then you break their neck. Whoa. Now, and the way she said break the neck, you cannot break the neck. But anyway, I'm like this. She has a knife there. Put your hand on it for sure. You don't have time to, to, to hunt and search. And then once you put your hand on it, you actually get closer and turn that towards him. Mm. They can't see you. Come here. I ain't never seen that one. Before. So you get closer. You've seen this one. <laughs> he, he always said, I never saw that one. You turn towards them yeah, to cool. threaten with him with it, okay? So I'm trying to look. I threaten him with it. At that point, I'm out. Yeah, because once you do that, I'm he runs from the point. And you may so I go, one off. Huh, and, I, and may hit him, yeah. If I if I use one hand and go under, I can't hit him. So I threaten him with it. He's going to move. That allows me to get out. If he doesn't move, he gets stabbed. So I, it's a win-win. Mm. If he just say, I'm not moving. And he puts that hand around my, my, my chest. And like, no, no, you had it right here. And I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, now he's getting stuck. He's going to move this. So either way, he's going to move. You put the hand on, you turn the blade towards him. So you get room to get out of there. I can walk right out of there now. Okay, now this here, I wouldn't walk that way because he still got a blade. As I go here, then I would push that out of the way and go run. You got to take off. If you cannot run, once you get out, you got to deal with this tool now. Okay, don't think of disarming. It's not going to happen. You know, some people put your elbow, your forearm there, disarm. Maybe not. He's resistant. He's going to be resistant. You just got loose. He's snatching. Push that towards him. Crack him. Run. I would just run. Because all I need is a few feet to be able to pull my tool. <laughs> That's why having a tool is a must. Unless your state says you can't even carry a... Uh, even if it says you can't carry a knife. Can you hand me my jacket real quick? Even if it says you can't carry a knife. Black people... And other folk, you say, well, I can't carry a knife. Then maybe I can carry a, a flashlight. There's a crenellated bubble on that flashlight so I can crack his ass and bust his face with that. I was about to say crack his skull. You probably won't. You hurt him. But you you <laughs> rake his face with it. And, uh, well, that's not a uh, dollar store flashlight. No, no, no. Dollar store could just, just break. No, you're going to pay... You can get this flashlight pipe for, uh, on, on sale for, uh, I don't know, $180. You can find one that look like it for $80. Look like it. It ain't got to be this one. You can find one that looks like it for $80. Okay, you say, well, it's still too much. How much your shoes cost? How much your cell phone cost? Right. How much does your life cost? Exactly. Because I'm willing to bet you don't have no $40 shoes on. And if you do, that's all you can do. Then you get you a, 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 a palm stick. You get you a, a damn uh, a, a dowel, saw it down so it's, it's short. Use a palm stick or, like I've talked before, a marker. Right. All you need is to be able to get something to get him off of you. Or you pull sure. that marker, you crack his hand, crack his hand, crack his hand. Remember, we dealt with that with the stick. You attack the hand. That's the delivery system. So I attack his hand, attack him until I make him drop. I attack his hand. If you like, you want to use the other hand, smack his face. I say smack his hand, smack his face. Now he did ah, and she go back to hitting that hand. Pocket sharp is less than ten dollars. They work yeah. really well. Like six dollars. Yeah. And and that that's and that's it's a marker 
but it's also made of a polymer so it does not break okay so you said don't say i showed you that oh oh we talking about yeah yeah i don't know what b was talking about <laughs> uh centuries always get the worst yes they do you can get something like it cheaper yes exactly my tactical pen would do some damage yes absolutely if you have a tactical pen they actually have some with the crenellated bevel just like that flashlight so you're absolutely right uh they have some that have a point and that's going to do more stabbing and that's that's fine too you just got to get away okay? you might can't have a, you can't have a knife in your, in your where you at maybe you can have a letter opener they look sort of similar right <laughs> you know exactly and don't tell me you you're gonna turn your hands into knives don't don't do that that's why you tell me that well, i've seen the dude slice a watermelon bob on, on uh, youtube he slice right through it with the with the uh his finger yeah mm, that ain't that something you can probably slice right through his fingers too, though. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> with, with a knife, yeah, and slice his fingers and the watermelon, and then eat the watermelon while he bleeding. As long as he don't bleed on the watermelon. Peace, Kalanji. Peace, Kalanji. How you doing, bros? Siapu, salute. Step behind and stand up. Oh, I showed that one. Okay. Arm techniques. I just showed the knife. Uh, we got two guns here. Of course we do. It can be. I mean, y'all got to unload a real gun. I'm not getting shot up in there doing doing uh <laughs> doing goddamn dust techniques so this will be the the last technique this is dust and then we'll take any questions you have i, I have one that i want to uh, cool. Cool. From a, um, a, a real life excuse me <clears throat> it's from a real life experience that one of my facebook friends had mm. that and the reason why I want to include it is because this is someone who I have some love for. This is someone who so I went to elementary school and high school with. Okay, well, we'll deal with that one first then. Oh, you want to do that now? Or you, yeah, now you, you said, so you went to school with this girl? Yes. Um, so I was looking through. Drop the um, one in the, uh, drop the magazine. I already did. Okay, uh, let me see it. Got to make sure it's, whenever you're working with a real firearm, make sure that, it's not loaded. You drop the magazine. You lock back the slide. But I remember we had that problem before with this one. <laughs> but uh, so you, you make sure there's nothing in there. I'm not pointing at anybody. Make sure there's no rounds in there. And then because he gave it to me, I pointed at him for a trick. <laughs> now you don't do that part. Don't do that part. All right. I made sure it was, it, it, it was empty before I did that. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, we're gonna use that one in the uh, so we're gonna use her, her her friends first. She said she uh had a friend that went through something, okay. something that I already shared with you. Like, I don't want to read it word for word because it's kind of long. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, uh, what's she the... basically was going went into a store, mm -hmm. a man approached her, she didn't like his approach. She told him, you know, she wasn't interested. Mm -hmm. Um, but she was she was polite, that was the thing. She's always very polite. Okay. So then he he told her after she basically rebuffed him politely that he would wait for her outside while he would while she finished getting her purchases. What so, she, <laughs> so she walks outside, he's there, and he and since he's there and he's following her basically, she tells him, Well, I'm on my way to this tire shop over here, which I to, it, it was like a mall. She tells him that? It, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a mall type situation. So she's going to the one of those uh, car, car care shops that's like in the parking lot of the mall. Mm -hmm. So basically they walk together, you know, to this tire shop. Uh, she goes to the counter. He's with her as though he's standing with her. As like though he's a man. With her. Yes. So the, the manager of the tire shop um, uh, thinks that they're together actually goes and starts talking to him about the car and all of this. And she's like, Hey, excuse me, you know, we're not together. I, I don't know him, you know? And, uh, basically let me see, it ends by, um, the tire, this tire shop manager gives her some discounts or whatever. Um, the guy is still asking her, you know, do you, does, he, does she want to go to dinner and all this other stuff? And she declined. That's the last thing that she said. So I don't know how he ended up leaving or anything like that. But oh, he put his hand on. No, no, this is just right. about okay. how much she was. Okay, so her. but right. So she was asking men for their advice on how she could have handled herself differently. Okay, the the, the, the easiest thing is you don't tell him shit. Right. Now, 
we can say don't be polite. Be polite. That, that, that don't cost you nothing. Right. Telling them where you're going can cost you something. And didn't one did of the men on there saying that she could handle it well? Right. There were that's men another on there thing. Told her that well, that's because they, they don't know. So, so they, they're ignorant, too, just because, you know, uh, I was born with a penis is not what made me be able to defend myself. Yeah, right. I've had many men come into uh, class and, and, and say stuff. You know, a dude comes in with his son and he's, he's where's the master at? I said, I'm him. He, he looks me up and down. <laughs> like, dude, this ain't a, 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 a pissing contest or a, a, a machismo contest. You know what I mean? So I said, you know, so he said, you do uh, tournaments? I said, my partner does. I said, I don't. Uh, I said, you know, these, these prove. See, I put my hands up. They prove mm-hmm. that I can get down. That's unlike your, your, your dad. And the reason why I did that, he, he's peed off because the way he tries to look me up and down. My children were there. Mm-hmm. So, okay, well, you know, tip for tat. I can be petty. I can be petty. I can be petty. You know, right, right. Like that. Like you the and, and and I said, but sir, I could be wrong. If you ever want to get down, doors open, you can come in anytime. You can get down. <laughs> and he left, never saw him again. But that sister in that situation, it's okay to be polite anytime. Because be not being outside. polite don't run the person off either. Said, get get the fuck away from me. That don't make him leave. He may still be like, okay, I'll be outside. I, but this one, yeah. I'll be outside. Right. It's a different so. You can be polite, but when he says, I'll be outside. Now, there's a problem when he says that. So that's called discounting the word no. There are seven signals of a predator, okay? Uh, That's one of the seven, discounting the word no. Just doing that by itself, a lot of times we may discount no, okay? But if the other ones, if, if you're dealing with three or more, sometimes two or more, or just the situation tells you, like her situation, that's problematic. He says that, uh, you know, I see you I'll, I'll be waiting outside. He discounted the word, he discounted no. He wasn't interested, right? But then, okay, where you going? Oh, I'm going to the tie shop. You, you don't do that. Right. Where, where are you going? No, it, this the way it happened was, Basically, it was like she was trying to walk fast past him when mm-hmm. she left the place. And he started walking with and her. he started walking with her. She was like, well, I'm, I'm headed over here. And she tries to just go Yeah, past that, that's him. her fear talking. I'm heading over here. You don't tell him nothing. Right. In fact, he, he he's walking with you. Take that as a violent attack and deal with it accordingly. And if you don't know how to deal, run back to where you went or run to somewhere or run to somebody. This dude was threatening this, this woman. I was going to the store. She runs to me. She ran to the white, right one. <laughs> I'm I'm like, what's, what's going on? He, he said he's going to beat me up. Oh, no. He's not going to beat you up. You, you can go in the store with me. <laughs> he said, she, she walked through the door. I'm going to whoop her ass. I said, if you touch her, I'm going to toss your ass. It was a, this ramp going to us. I'm going to toss your ass over the balcony. Then I'm going to jump in your chest and kill you if you touch this woman, right? So he, <laughs> hey man, you ain't gotta be like that, you know. But 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 really, you know, you ain't gonna stop me if I do. I said, man, I'm not trying to get no challenge you, because I don't want this sister caught in the crossfire. But do it, do it. I said, come on, sister. So I'm walking to the store. He, <laughs> I'm like, if he, if he if he does it, he think I'm gonna get thrown. I'm gonna blow his ass over. This. <laughs> so the owner comes out. But on the son, glad it wasn't the owner. It was on the son. He said, "What's up?" I said, "He talking about hitting that man. I'm, I'm gonna beat his ass if he does." He said, "Oh, we, we can go ahead and get down with this nigga <laughs> like that." And the dude looking like, "What? What's going on?" You know. Then he left. So if she runs, but unfortunately nowadays she runs to do. I ain't getting in there. I ain't getting in there. What you do? Right, right. What did you do? Like that fool. I, I was just thinking. <laughs> what, you, what, what did you do to make him? So that that you just ran to a simp. <laughs> you ran to a simp. Punk. Simp, punk, chump, all of that. Okay. So an employee from the store or another stranger would have accompanied me, especially to my car. That too. 
he brushed it off like like lint. Exactly, he did. But another thing, you and do, yes, I told him I'm gonna jump in his chest, and I, I mean, and I don't mean like jumping his chest. I was literally going to jump off the balcony onto his chest. But even then, so depending on how you assess this danger, you may not want to even go to your car if the man is outside waiting for you. And not because he can jump in the car with you. He could. But no. He gets your license plate. Yes, he he has your plate. You he, knows, he, he knows where you live. He can follow if, if, you. If now. you get their license plate, you don't even have to follow. People have access to certain things. Yeah. You can get people's address okay. if you have yeah. their mm -hmm. license plate. Or you can pay for it. Or you can, you can have family members, police. Or he could have been a goddamn police. Yes. There was a police officer that was raping boys in the projects in Chicago, man. He would go to work. He would get off work. And then he would go and, and rape teenage boys. They were so scared of the police. And uh, he got dealt with, thank God, by, by somebody, you know, that was a good citizen. Um, but, hey. You got folks like so police, all of them. They don't say, "Well, I just call the police and they escort me." Mm, okay, well, you you can try that if you want to. You can't do that every time, anyway. And they may be yeah. right. A lot of times they'll be like, "Ma'am, they'll do the, What did you do?" Right, ma'am. Uh, you're acting real aggressive, ma'am. Now you know you're about to to get it now. You're being real aggressive, ma'am. Uh, calm down, ma'am. You just went through this this guy following you and and all this job, but he got in the Ma'am, put your hands in the car, ma'am. They're not listening to you. They don't. They don't give a damn about you. So, and 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 for people who are police, who are out there, you know, you may give a damn. I don't. I I, I have to doubt that to keep it one hundred. But the police, as a system, doesn't give a damn about black folks. Doesn't give a damn about women. Yeah, Don't give a damn. We we called the police when I was a teenager. A woman getting raped in the car right in front of us. People walking by, we tearing that up. That's what made us look. And I look, she's looking out the window. She she mouths, help me. So me and my friend Anthony get her out of the car. I walk around and I'm like, hey man, what's going on? What you doing, bro? What's going on? White dude raping uh 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 uh. Mexican woman in the car. What's going on? He said, man, get the app away from the car. I said, well, what's going on? Y'all doing it? Anthony going around the car the whole time. The brick. Boom! Busts his window. He, oh, oh. And he start reaches in, start pulling him out and shit. And they all cut up in glass. It was crazy. And so I run around, help him get him out, and we're just stomping that dude, whooping his behind, right? The woman opens the door and runs out naked. Runs across Allen Avenue, which is eight lanes. She runs across, goes into this tavern. Not that she wanted to drink. That's the only place open. And she hear people in there, right? We call the police. They said, you know, that was that was honorable of you, young man, but don't, don't get involved anymore. He said, she wasn't worth it. She wasn't worth what? I said, what are you talking about? He said, she's a prostitute. I said, prostitutes can't get raped. Right. I don't even think she's brought, but I'm like, prostitutes can't ring. She was calling for us to help her. Yeah, man. Yeah, just don't get involved anymore, okay? All right. But but you know, that was that was a good one. It's good to, to protect your neighborhood, guys. Black men, we cannot be weak like that. We can't be I'm not gonna even address that uh, dude that uh that did that uh what did she do type thing. You see a, a woman running from a man or whatever. Or a man running towards a woman, clearly he's not being attacked at, somebody, at that time. Oh, somebody said in Cabrini. In Cabrini. Yes, it was in Cabrini. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, do you know about it personally or, or you just heard of Cabrini? Because, yes, it, it absolutely happened in Cabrini where he was raping those teenage boys. Hmm. Um, Thank you for addressing that, bro. But I was. Yeah. Um, I didn't address it with her, but I mean, I, I, like you said, that was the first red flag to me that he said, I'll be waiting for you outside. Right. The politeness have to stop after that. Yeah, you, yeah. you have to let him exactly. know on no uncertain terms should he be outside when you, if you get out there. And that's another thing. Don't be concerned about hurting people's feelings. Because right. they can hurt you physically, mentally, right. emotionally. Yeah. So don't be concerned about that. 
or if, say, if you're out on a date, everything about this person feels, you know, right. They look good. They smell good. They funny. They, but a red flag comes and says something not right. Get gone. Get gone. Figure it out later. Because right, don't don't figure it out once you marry, and then you say the wrong joke and he kicks you in the face, or she cuts you, or whatever. Get gone. Okay. Don't worry about hurting folks' feelings. Or because I always say loneliness is an MF. Because you're lonely, you're gonna just deal with this thing right here. No, no, get gone. Before the stakes are too high, y'all done got a bunch of children, mm -hmm. y'all done bought a house together, and uh, now you can't go nowhere, but you're getting abused. Okay. Uh now, last technique. This is my this my is this my technique, my favorite one I seen. This the, the gun technique. One to the stomach. Oh, baby. One to the head. You saw <laughs> bad mama jamma defend herself. Now he puts one to the head, that one to my point at my head. She points that one to my gut. Oh boy, this is dangerous. But right, not, man, right not when you're trained. Right. So she says, what you do is you now it was Swiss sides. It was on the other side. I, I, I tell I'll show y'all why. Yes, it was. So he's at my head, she's at my gut. She said, You you knock this into him. I and I don't know how she did it, but she well, he let it happen. You knock that into him, he shoots himself. Even if he doesn't, you knock it, and then this one, you, you knock that out the way. <laughs> bow, bow. That's Damn. one way. The other way was, it, it was two people pointing. Now, this dude, I can't even do like him. He's so wrong. He said, ha, hoy, kid, ha. Yeah, he just kept kicking today with down. down. That's yeah, another you one. Keep holding your arm out there after you hit it the first time. Yeah, good. I can also go this way. Did y'all see that one? <laughs> Ooh, see that one. Yeah, they they blast wow. each other, and then I just let him go and walk off. I think I've seen that old John Wick one time. So I said, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Put my finger in the trigger too. Boom, she shot, and then she shoots his hand. Right, because she froze when you did she it. She froze, right. She wasn't expecting it. I shoot her. I shoot her while she's trying to reach around and shoot me. I got it. See? Now, the, the moral of that story is you're not going to take if you If you're caught like this, number one, I don't know what kind of assassins these are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They cross firing each other like this, but because I think they hit me and I fall. They may hit each other. Right, right. So it's ridiculous. They're not very smart assassins, but they're smarter than me because I let myself get walked <laughs> up on like this. Okay. If they're further away, what y'all want? You want more? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I mean, shit. Now, if they if they close, if they close right here though. What y'all want? My wallet. The same thing. <laughs> Because you're not doing nothing against two guns. So there is no technique. And what's the solution to that? Give your shit up <laughs> and pray you, yes. or whatever it is, do your mantras, whatever you're going to be doing, you got to do something because you're in trouble. Okay. So that's situational uh, awareness is the answer. Situational that. awareness is the answer. You say, well, what the hell are those two people? Situation. Yeah. Why are they walking behind me like? Right. They, they're not looking right. <laughs> Or, or they keep touching here. That's called cupping. They, they keep cupping. That means they, they're cupping a weapon, even if it's, it's over here. They keep cupping. Mm -hmm. Even throughout here, I, I know I do it. I, you know, through, watching here, I'm like this. Oh, every now and then. Every now and then. Because that, that's just my, you know, my thing. I, I go for my tool, right? And so as I'm talking about certain situations, I would have gone for my tool. And so that, that happens. So even me. I, I cuff sometimes. So people with pistols, a lot of times they'll cuff. They they don't want to fall out. You know they're uncomfortable. Even they comfortable, they still will touch. Because they're so used to having this mechanism. Right. So they you know they be so and so so and so. Yeah. So, that's not a natural place to touch yourself. So and so yeah. So and so so and so. You just talking with your friend. He like what's wrong with your booty? It's in the sun, dude. What's, what's wrong with you? Why you keep touching right there? Okay. Why you keep touching right there? What are you doing? It's not natural. So when you see that, 
You know they have a tool. Uh, best be prepared to use yours or get gone. If they're if they're knowing they, they walking, they walking so and so. They touch right there. Try to cross the street, go back, whatever it is you gotta do. Okay. So be safe out here. A lot of these things on YouTube. If you got some uh, things you've seen on YouTube, send them to me. Uh, I tell you, I studied all of the videos I could find on the Dust Dude, not the jokes on him. I'm talking about his videos. Not one of them would I recommend to use for, for your self defense. I have to be honest about that. And if he's on here, call me. But I'm not like Snoop, Master Ken. I'm not here to joke with you, man. Because people's lives are on the line with this shit. Uh, but I say call me because I want to talk to you and, and, and see what, what what's your strategy, what's your end game doing this. He may just be because he may be ignorant. He may not know that you know the stuff. Ain't working. And and he he may know, but he, he it could be because he's ignorant. A lot of times we think we know something, and and, and that shuts us off from learning. Um, or you know, talk to somebody better than me. But you need to talk to somebody, man, because your techniques are are are, are lacking. And I'm real slow to say that and do that to a brother. But I mean, it has to, it had to be. Now, I could have done the stuff about him another way and been funny with it. But man, our lives are on the line when we out there. That You're shit funny. ain't funny. You're right. That shit's not funny. That's it's ridiculous what he's doing now. Um, I've laughed at some of the stuff, but never. If somebody was to ask me, well, does this technique work? But I just clown and joke and laugh at them about that technique. Sometimes we get too desensitized to what's going on, too. We do. There's a video of a brother called the police. Is this, what is it? This is in Alabama, Decatur, Alabama. The guy called the police about somebody that had, um, I, I forgot what they did. Robbing his liquor store. Right, right. But when the police got there, they attacked the man. They knew he was the owner. Attacked him, beat him down. I, I got a brother on the comment talking about, because the guy narrating said, you know, he's, he's he got a lawsuit against him. So he hope he win the lawsuit. And the guy will come comment, oh, man, y'all scared of police. I'm laughing at this brother. Like, what the fuck is funny? What are you laughing at? Are you laughing at one of us getting attacked? Crazy. Oh, I, I attack. Yeah, I, I, I fight the police. Uh, they ain't got no reason to laugh. We just so All right. sick, Okay, you fight the police. Boy. I hope you win. But it's not funny. Right, regardless. All right, y'all. So, any uh, concerns, martial concerns, self defense concerns you have, you can put them online. Uh, we will see you all next week. Love y'all. Stay safe. Stay black, or whatever it is that you may be. Kalaji, if you're still on there, holler at your boy for us. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Holler at your boy for us. You, I didn't text you. Holler at your boy. I got to get at you like this. This is how I got to do it. Holler at your boy. Holler at your boy. <laughs> Because he told us he would be a guest on here. All right, peace. Peace, y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all.